Welcome to Coast Guard Training Center, Cape May. My name is Lieutenant Commander Matthews and I'll be your Master of Ceremonies for today's recruit graduation. Training Center Cape May was originally named Coast Guard Receiving Center Cape May when it opened on May 31st, 1948. In 1982, Training Center Cape May became the service's only recruit training center. Nestled between the Atlantic Ocean and Cape May Harbor, Training Center Cape May once belonged to the U.S. Marines and the U.S. Navy and was an instrumental training area for troops during World War I and World War II. In the late 1960s, three 500-person recruit barracks were constructed and named after Coast Guard heroes. Signalman First Class Douglas Monroe, the Coast Guard's only Medal of Honor recipient. Captain Joshua James of the U.S. Life Saving Service, one of the most celebrated lifesavers in the world. And Captain Michael Healy of the U.S. Revenue Cutter Service, a legend along Alaska's 20,000 mile coastline. In 1974, the first group of women enlisted as regulars and reported to Cape May. Mixed gender recruit training began. In the 90s, the training center's recruit processing building was dedicated to Petty Officer First Class Charles W. Sexton, a shipmate who sacrificed his life while attempting to save the lives of four people aboard a sinking fishing vessel. Today, the training center staff graduates approximately 3,500 new Coast Guardsmen each year and is committed to developing America's newest enlisted men and women in a manner that secures the trust and confidence of our service and families who trust us with the care of their loved ones. Our men and women also provide the highest level of support to our 12 tenant commands that include operational and support units. We're guided by the principles of service to nation, duty to people, and commitment to excellence. Thank you for joining us today and welcome to the graduation ceremony for recruit company Zulu 192. Please rise for the arrival of the official party. The official party consists of Senior Chief Thompson, company mentor. Master Chief Hollinsworth, Command Master Chief. Commander Muse, Executive Officer, Training Center Cape May. Captain Gibbons, Commanding Officer, Training Center Cape May. Rear Admiral Anderson, Judge Advocate General and Chief Counsel of the Coast Guard. Thank you. Please be seated. The drill team and color guard consist of recruits selected by the ceremonial drill master who perform at a high level and can learn the complicated movements in addition to basic training. The drill team carries demilitarized 1903 rifles and executes all movements without verbal command. So please hold your applause until the end of the routine. The drill team and color guard are trained and supervised by Chief Kilduff.
Ladies and gentlemen, the recruit precision drill team. Each Coast Guardsman understands the importance of our organization and has recited our Coast Guard ethos on a daily basis. The Coast Guard ethos was derived from our Coast Guard's capstone doctrine, Pub 1, and commits our newest members to the Coast Guard's character, culture, and core values of honor, respect, and devotion to duty. The Coast Guard ethos provides the framework to develop a morally, mentally, and physically fit, more capable apprentice, ready to meet the mission execution requirements of an ever-changing Coast Guard. Sound off. We are pleased that parents, relatives, and friends of the Coast Guard have joined us for this ceremony. The lead company commander for Zulu 102 is Petty Officer Utenhauen. The assistant company commanders are Petty Officer Howe and Petty Officer Bots. It is a military custom and tradition to provide military honors for all high-ranking dignitaries and flag officers. Today, the training center is pleased to be rendering musical honors for Rear Admiral Anderson, Judge Advocate General and Chief Counsel of the Coast Guard. Musical honors will consist of one ruffle and flourish, followed by the flag officer's march. Those in uniform should cover and render the hand salute. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the rendering of honors. Please remain standing for the presentation of colors and the playing of our national anthem. Uniformed personnel should render the military salute. Members and veterans of the armed forces not in uniform may also render the military salute. 
All others present should face the flag in attention, remove your hat, and place your right hand over your heart. We welcome you to remain standing for the invocation. Present the colors. Post the colors. The invocation will be delivered by Chaplain McGraw. This prayer was written by the religious petty officers from the graduating company. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this beautiful day. We are thankful too for this graduating company, for the mountains you have dared them to climb and the valleys you have helped them to endure. We are grateful that through it all they have grown in character and confidence. We ask that you would bless these new Coast Guardsmen as they join the fleet. You have been their light and their strength through the struggles of training, and now you send them to be light and strength for others. May they always remember what they have learned here in training. Guide them and guard them in times of trial and times of triumph. Help them in the high calling of putting service before self, and give them joy and peace in the journey. Amen. Please be seated. In the course of training, the progress of each recruit has been closely watched. Each one has been called upon to form the skills required for Coast Guard service. Each one has been trained and tested in seamanship, marksmanship, damage control, first aid, military drill, military customs, and Coast Guard history. They have developed self-confidence and self-discipline and are ready to serve their country and humanity as members of the United States Coast Guard. We will now recognize the individual award winners. The award winners will be congratulated by Captain Gibbons, Commanding Officer, Training Center, Cape May. He's accompanied by Rear Admiral Anderson, Assistant Commandant for, and Master Chief Hollinsworth, Command Master Chief, Senior Chief Thompson, Company Mentor, Mr. John Seward, the Coast Guard Combat Veterans Association, Mr. George Vaughn of the Coast Guard Auxiliary, 
Petty Officer Perusin of the Coast Guard Enlisted Association, and Mr. Leo Collins, United States Marine Corps League Dramas Detachment. Sponsored by the City of Cape May, the Most Improved Physical Fitness Award was presented to the recruit who has shown the most improvement in all areas of physical fitness. The Most Improved Physical Fitness Award winner for Zulu 192 is senior recruit Caitlin Hall. The recruit who showed the highest level of physical fitness during training received a certificate and wristwatch given in memory of Jack Campbell, former president of the Coast Guard Combat Veterans Association and gunner's mate during D-Day. The John W. Campbell Physical Fitness Award winner for Zulu 192 is SEAM recruit Trevor Lynn. The recruit who best supported the regimental training plan received a certificate and enlisted memorial foundation challenge coin given in memory of Lieutenant Commander Charlie Gao, a policy writer, author, and a 1979 graduate of Coast Guard basic training who dedicated his entire professional career to the enlisted workforce. The company yeoman award winner for Zulu 192 is SEAM recruit Blanca Mendez. The Best Shipmate Award was presented on behalf of the Coast Guard Enlisted Association to the person selected by the members of their company who has been the most helpful during training. The Best Shipmate Award winner for Zulu 192 is SEMA recruit Austin Fairchild. A certificate and mom's spike knife was presented on behalf of the Coast Guard Auxiliary to the recruit who achieved the highest overall average during the seamanship phase of training. The seamanship award winner for Zulu 102 is seamer recruit Keenan Wilson. A certificate and challenge coin was presented on behalf of the United States Marine Corps League to the recruit who has demonstrated the highest level of proficiency in executing the Manual of Arms. The Manual of Arms award winner for Zulu 192 is SEAM recruit Taylor Campbell. On behalf of the Cape May Chiefs Association, a certificate and challenge coin was presented to the recruit selected by the company commanders who demonstrated the greatest leadership influence during training. The leadership award winner for Zulu 102 is senior recruit Brian Wyatt. Given on behalf of the Fleet Reserve Association, a certificate is presented to the graduate who has the highest overall academic average. The academic award winner for Zulu 192 is senior recruit Theodore OJ. <laughs> on behalf of the Navy League, a plaque was presented to the recruit who has the highest final overall standing. This recruit has earned the title of Honor Graduate and is authorized to wear the Coast Guard Honor Graduate Ribbon. The Honor Graduate today for Zulu 192 is SEAM recruit Travis Tackett. Congratulations to Major Wise Coach. God speed on your trip to the Coast Guard. Congratulations. The colorful streamers on the Zulu Company flag indicate outstanding achievement in the areas of blood drive, marksmanship, seamanship, academics, physical fitness, and overall company performance. It is now my pleasure to present to you Captain Gibbons, who will advance the graduates, offer his remarks, and introduce the guest speaker. Uniform personnel, attention to advancement. Very well, Pettis, you now well done.
Members of Zulu 192, your basic training is now complete. It is my pleasure to officially advance you from seaman recruit to seaman, seaman apprentice, fireman or fireman apprentice. Congratulations on your first advancement in the United States Coast Guard. Please be seated. Admiral Anderson, distinguished guests, parents, family and friends of Zulu 192, welcome to Coast Guard Training Center Cape May, the birthplace of the Enlisted Corps. We are very excited that you could join us, and we are hope that you are truly impressed with what you see before you. So I've got to ask, how do they look? We agree. These graduates have been dreaming of nothing but this day for months and they are proud of what they've accomplished while they've been away from you, but they are eager to get back into your arms. Before we move into the graduation ceremony, however, I'd like to take a moment to point out a couple groups of special visitors that we have with us today. The first is the senior enlisted leadership class. This is a group of experienced students preparing for future assignments as command master chiefs who will serve as counselors for our junior personnel and advocates on their behalf, advising field commanders and our executive leadership on workforce needs. As a part of that preparation, they return right here to Training Center Cape May, where this journey started for them as well, to reconnect with the most junior levels of our workforce and the process that shaped them. I'd like to ask the SELC members to stand please and be recognized. Another special group of folks visiting with us today are members of the United Services Organization. You probably know them as the USO, which for nearly 75 years has been the nation's leading organization to serve uh, men and women in the U.S. military. They are probably best known for their trademark USO tours, which bring America and its celebrities to our men and women who are assigned far from home. Equally important, though, are the USO airport centers located throughout the country that offer around-the-clock hospitality for traveling service members and for their families. The volunteers joining us today are from that great organization and serve at the Liberty USO at the airport in Philadelphia, which for generations of recruits has been performing an essential service to the Coast Guard and an act of kindness to our trainees. See, each Tuesday, men and women from all over our country descend on that USO where they're welcomed by these volunteers. They're provided snacks and a comfortable place to compose themselves before the rigors of boot camp begin. The USO volunteers check our entire roster of trainees in and monitor flights from across the country to make sure that our shipmates who have been delayed don't miss this most important of connections. They brief our newest members up on what to expect when they first get to boot camp and they load them up on buses until late into the evening, send them on their way to us. I'm going to ask, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that you would help me to recognize the members of the USO, Liberty USO, that are with us here today. Can you please stand? All right, when Zulu Company did step off that bus, we warned the men and women that you see in front of you that we would insist that they meet every single standard of our program. And quite honestly, 43 people that got off that bus with them are not standing in front of you now eight weeks later. The folks who do stand before you as graduates in Zulu Company did more than merely meet our standards. However, they reached high levels of performance along the way. Among other awards that you've heard mentioned, Zulu earned a midterm and final exam pennants for high exam academic averages. They earned near perfect scores for their close order drill and manual of arms assessments, and they ultimately won the section commander's pennant. All of those are signs of a team that is focused on what our commandant would call commitment to excellence. Our graduates invested what I call sweat equity right here. They learned a lot about who they are, and that insight pays dividends over a lifetime of service. But most impressively, despite all the stormy weather created by their CCs, 
the days that made them question their decision to serve and even their ability to persevere, not even one member of Zulu Company quit. And folks, I'm here to tell you that that is absolutely rare. Flying proudly from their guide on is the Zulu flag itself. Each nautical flag has a distinctive meaning in a system of signals between naval ships at sea. These signals are sent as letters which have meanings by themselves and also as distinctive combinations. In 1949, a new international naval signal code was adopted after the North Atlantic Treaty Associate Organization, or NATO, was created. Until then, each Navy in NATO had used its own signal code, but World War II experience had shown that it was difficult for ships of different navies to operate together unless they could communicate readily. Amongst the many tables in this publication is the one governed by the Bravo flag. When another, Bravo, when another flag follows the Bravo flag, it conveys a distinctive message. Most of these meanings are straightforward commands or directions. But when you add the Zulu flag, you get something unique and highly coveted within the naval services. The signal Bravo Zulu is the one that a commander flies to commend the performance of the crew of a subordinate unit. To this very day, this signal simply conveys a heartfelt well done. Zulu Company, you started together and you finished together. And you should be very proud because we know that if you won't quit here, you won't quit on the American public in their time of need. Well done. How about joining me in a round of applause for Zulu? Graduates, these are just the first of many accolades that we expect you to win in your service to our nation. Here at Training Center Cape May, our claim to fame is that co countless Coast Guard men and women, more than 120,000 in the last 30 years, have started off right here just like you and I did. They've gone on to be engineering petty officers, officers in charge of small boat stations and cutters, gold badge command master chiefs advising our flag corps, and even the master chief petty officer of the Coast Guard. I'm absolutely certain that my own company commanders did not expect I would someday command this training center. They just trained us like every other recruit through an experience that made us part of a family, one that had its roots right here and taught us what it meant to grow up in and to be from the Coast Guard's hometown. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the organization that your sons and daughters have chosen, and this is one that offers tremendous opportunities for those who prove themselves proficient and responsible. Like every other hometown experience training center, Cape May, START created a foundation for the many opportunities that our great organization will provide for those willing to answer the call. The truth is that we do not know for certain what opportunities an individual recruit will rise to, nor the demands that our nation will place on this next generation of the Coast Guard. But we do know exactly who the nation will call upon in time of distress the men and women that we train here each and every day, and that knowledge instills a sacred responsibility to ensure that they are, in all ways, ready to answer that call. For that very reason, I'm humbled to lead this, lead this impressive team of military, civilian, and auxiliary personnel in training the next generation of men and women to serve our nation with the professionalism and character that makes the Coast Guard a distinctive service, and I'm confident that Zulu 192 has the ability to withstand the rigors of that service because I trust the judgment of their lead company commander, Petty Officer Uden Outen, and their assistant company commanders, Petty Officer Botts and Petty Officer Howell, and the fantastic job that they've done to prepare these graduates. I trust the professionalism of their lead instructor, Petty Officer Perosin, their lead gym instructor, Petty Officer Vucic, and their lead seaman instructor, Petty Officer Thompson. Their lead corpsman was Petty Officer Wanamaker, their lead yeoman, Petty Officer Ramirez. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please join me in a round of applause for the entire staff here at Training Center Cape May. <laughs> Graduates, as we discussed this week, there are two names on your uniform. The first is the name you arrived with, your family name. It is a name that you have made proud through the performance that has gotten you here to this day. The second is a name you earned right here as you were born into our Coast Guard like the generations of shipmates before you. The most important thing you have learned here at Cape May is what it means to have the character expected of those in our Coast Guard family. Remember that character is a choice. 
and it is usually formed by the small day-to-day -day decisions that become the foundation of how you operate. Let the core values of honor, respect, and devotion to duty guide your decisions. Allow those decisions to drive your actions. And let those actions perpetuate the unique service character that the American public has come to rely on from this Coast Guard since 1790. As you go forth and forge careers of service to this great nation, remember to honor both family names to make us proud. Cape May is your new hometown. Welcome to the family. Shipmates, it has been our pleasure to train you and now to celebrate you as full-fledged members of our workforce. God bless you and your families. God bless the United States Coast Guard and Semper Paratus. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce the mentor for Zulu Company, Rear Admiral Anderson, is a 1985 graduate of the U.S. Coast Guard Academy. He entered the Coast Guard legal program after receiving his Juris Doctor from George Mason University School of Law in 1997, and he's a member of the Virginia Bar. He's also the 2012 recipient of the ABA's Outstanding Military Service Career Judge Advocate Award. Rear Admiral Anderson's career includes various field and sea assignments, including two command ashore and two command afloat assignments. Rear Admiral Anderson currently serves as a Judge Advocate General and Chief Counsel of the Coast Guard in Washington, D.C., where he leads a dedicated group of legal professionals who are responsible for the delivery of all legal services in support of Coast Guard missions. Please join me in welcoming Rear Admiral Stephen Anderson. Good morning to the, the family and the friends of Zulu 192. Um, thanks for being here. By your presence here, you are honoring the accomplishments of this company and your recruit. So thank you. Uh, but most importantly, I want to say good morning to Zulu 192. It is an honor to stand before you. It's an honor for myself and for Senior Chief Thompson, the other company mentor, to have had a little chance to interact with you and to be here today as you transition into our Coast Guard. When you first came here and you formed up outside of Sexton Hall, you saw a banner that has, three, that has the Coast Guard's core values on it of honor, respect, and devotion to duty. And I want to talk just very briefly about what it means to have honor in our Coast Guard and really going to sum up quickly some of the discussions that Senior Chief and I had with you during those, our discussions. Um, you're not born with honor. You don't necessarily learn it, but it's something you have to earn it. So what does it look like to earn honor in our Coast Guard? The foundation is humility. It's putting service before self. It's not really worrying about who gets a credit when something goes right, but it's being willing to step up and take responsibility when something doesn't go so right. In the, in the opportunities that you have to be a leader within your unit, it's making sure that the people you're leading, that you also are serving them. The second, the second block, foundation block for honor is being loyal to your shipmates. And I know you learned what that, what that looks like here, but what that looks like in the fleet is this. It's being happy when the people around you succeed, and it's being willing to sacrifice to ensure that your shipmates succeed. It also means protecting your shipmates and having the courage to intervene, even when you know your shipmate may not appreciate it. That's what loyalty looks like. The third element of uh, being honorable, or being an honorable Coast Guard man and woman, is this. It's speaking out in honest conviction about our core values of honor, respect, and devotion to duty. If you're in the fleet and you see something that doesn't look or feel like honor, or respect, or devotion to duty, you have an obligation to say something about that, and to take firm action against that behavior. By showing humility, by encouraging your shipmates, and by have, being courageous and confronting things that don't comport with our core values of honor, respect, and devotion to duty, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if you do those, you will gain the reputation for being someone who has honor. And you will succeed in our Coast Guard. Zulu 192, aspire to be honorable. Congratulations, well done, bravo Zulu, and Semper Paratus.
We will now have the presentation of the graduation certificates. Chief Reed will now read the names of the graduates and where they'll be assigned. Seaman Ty Childers, Cusker Cutter X, Morgan City, Louisiana. Seaman Blanca Mendez, Station Grandal, Louisiana. Her certificate is being presented by her mentor, Staff Sergeant Teresa Garcia, U.S. Marine Corps. Seaman Caitlin Hall, FSA School, Petaluma, California. Fireman Apprentice Keenan Wilson. Maritime Force Protection Unit, Kings Bay, Georgia. His certificate is being presented by his mentor, Petty Officer First Class, Scott Davis, U.S. Navy. <laughs> Seaman Apprentice, Adam Perry, stationed Yoquinta Bay, Newport, Oregon. Fireman Apprentice Brandon Burlew, Coast Guard Cutter Uchida, Chattanooga, Tennessee. <laughs> Seaman Apprentice Matthew Cernakis, stationed Merrimack River, Newburyport, Massachusetts. <laughs> Fireman Trevor Lynn, Coast Guard Cutter Midget, Seattle, Washington. Seaman Apprentice Ricardo Garcia, Coast Guard Cutter Reliance, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. <laughs> Seaman Theodore O.J., Coast Guard Cutter Alex Haley, Kodiak, Alaska. <laughs> Seaman Apprentice Trey Hicks, Coast Guard Cutter Chandelure, Valdez, Alaska. Seaman Apprentice Austin Fairchild, ETA School, Petaluma, California. His certificate is being presented by his father, Sergeant First Class, John Fairchild, Louisiana National Guard. <laughs> Seaman Brian Wyatt, Coast Guard Cutter Thetis, Key West, Florida. Seaman Travis Tackett, Honor Guard, Alexandria, Virginia. <laughs> Seaman Apprentice Taylor Campbell, Honor Guard, Alexandria, Virginia. <laughs> Seaman Stephen Weber, Sector New York, Staten Island, New York. Seaman Apprentice Garrett Bird, Station Portsmouth, Virginia. <laughs> Seaman Apprentice Stephen Bedwell, Honor Guard, Alexandria, Virginia. <laughs> Seaman Ina Davenport, EMA School, at Yorktown, Virginia. Her certificate is being presented by her father, Major Richard Davenport, U.S. Army, retired. <laughs> 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 
Fireman Elisa Hanamio, Coast Guard Cutter Sherman, Honolulu, Hawaii. Her certificate is being presented by her mother, Lieutenant Junior Grade Lisa Hanamio, U.S. Navy. Seaman Lauren Rhodes, Port Security Unit 305, Fort Eustis, Virginia. <laughs> Seaman Apprentice Clayton Brown, Coast Guard Cutter Monroe, Kodiak, Alaska. <laughs> Seaman Apprentice Marcos Vega III, Coast Guard Cutter Seneca, Boston, Massachusetts. Fireman Apprentice Taylor Santa Cruz, Coast Guard Cutter Kickapoo, Vicksburg, Mississippi. <laughs> Seaman Jonathan Carvalot, Station Lake Charles, Louisiana. <laughs> Seaman Anthony Brickley, Station San Juan, Puerto Rico. Seaman Apprentice Justin Manning, Coast Guard Cutter Dependable, Virginia Beach, Virginia. <laughs> Fireman George Hatfield, Ace Navigation Team, St. Petersburg, Florida. <laughs> Seaman Brendan Combs, Air Station Cape Cod, Buzzards Bay, Massachusetts. Senior Apprentice Julian Mateo, Coast Guard Cutter Hawksville, Monterey, California. <laughs> Seaman Mark Ward, EMA School, Yorktown, Virginia. <laughs> Seaman Apprentice Nigel Surreal, Honor Guard, Alexandria, Virginia. Fireman Apprentice Zachary Langwell, Coast Guard Cutter Sagamon, East Peora, Illinois. <laughs> Seaman Apprentice Jeffrey Bursch, Honor Guard, Alexandria, Virginia. His certificate is being presented by his brother, Corporal Michael Bursch, U.S. Marine Corps. Seaman Apprentice Melinda Churchillo, Coast Guard Cutter Sequoia, Santa Maria, Guam. <laughs> Fireman Apprentice Joshua Appleby, Station Georgetown, South Carolina. <laughs> Seaman Apprentice Gabriel De La Garza, Coast Guard Cutter Morgenthau, Honolulu, Hawaii. Seaman Apprentice Austin Johnson, MKA School, Yorktown, Virginia. <laughs> Seaman Apprentice Jacob Tritt, Coast Guard Cutter Bear, Portsmouth, Virginia. <laughs> Seaman Apprentice Megan Harris, FSA School, Petaluma, California. Fireman Apprentice William Hercules, Coast Guard Cutter Kiska, Hilo, Hawaii. <laughs> Seaman Apprentice Jeremiah Perez, Coast Guard Cutter Forward, Portsmouth, Virginia. <laughs> Fireman Apprentice Shad Johnson, Jr., stationed in Muskegon, Michigan. His certificate is being presented by his father, Engineer Shad Johnson. Charlotte, North Carolina Fire Department. <laughs> Seaman Apprentice Tyler Bradbury, stationed Tybee Island, Georgia. <laughs> S 
semen apprentice, William Malone's son, MKA School, Yorktown, Virginia. His certificate is being presented by his father, Chief Warrant Officer Robert Malone's son, U.S. Coast Guard. <laughs> semen apprentice, Richard Cordes Cordeleski, Coast Guard Cutter at Manatee, Corpus Christi, Texas. Semen apprentice Dietrich Stein, Coast Guard Cutter Sturgeon, Randall, Louisiana. His certificate is being presented by his father, Major Hans Stein, U.S. Army. <laughs> Semen apprentice Jordan Biting, Coast Guard Cutter Laguerre, Portsmouth, Virginia. Fireman Apprentice Edward Ramirez, Coast Guard Cutter at Manatee, Corpus Christi, Texas. <laughs> Semen Apprentice Austin Back, EMA School, Yorktown, Virginia. <laughs> Semen Madison Scholar, Sector Wilmington, North Carolina. Seaman Tashina Gonzalez, Coast Guard Cutter, Robert Yurd, Miami Beach, Florida. <laughs> Seaman Apprentice Eric Montez, Station Lake Tahoe, California. His certificate is being presented by his father-in-law, Senior Master Sergeant Jose Gonzalez, U.S. Air Force. Semen Apprentice Hunter Hockenberry, stationed in St. Petersburg, Florida. <laughs> Semen Apprentice Caitlin O'Brien, Coast Guard Cutter Isaac Mayo, Key West, Florida. <laughs> Semen Apprentice Samuel Richards, Coast Guard Cutter at Monroe, Kodiak, Alaska. <laughs> Seaman Timothy De Silva, Coast Guard Cutter James Rankin, Baltimore, Maryland. <laughs> Seaman Anthony Bohr, Coast Guard Cutter Terrapin, Bellingham, Washington. <laughs> Seaman Apprentice Efron Perez, Coast Guard Cutter Alder, Duluth, Minnesota. Fireman Apprentice Hunter Hollins, Motor Life Boat Station, Golden Gate, Sausalito, California. <laughs> Seaman Jacob Weaver, Coast Guard Cutter, Polar Star, Seattle, Washington. <laughs> Seaman Christopher Burris, Maritime Force Protection Unit, Kings Bay, Georgia. Seaman Apprentice Markevis Townsend, stationed Belle Isle, Detroit, Michigan. <laughs> Seaman Apprentice Owen Carmen, Coast Guard Cutter Forward, Portsmouth, Virginia. <laughs> Fireman Apprentice Aaron Keeney, stationed Booth Bay Harbor, Maine. Seaman Apprentice Uriel Washington Jr. Coast Guard Cutter, Ventures, <laughs> Seaman Noel Fernandez, stationed Yoquina River, Winchester, Oregon. Seaman Liam Ramsey, Sector New York, Staten Island, New York. <laughs> Seaman 
Seaman Apprentice Kaylee Mesney, Coast Guard Cutter Sherwater, Portsmouth, Virginia. <laughs> Seaman Apprentice Matthew Breen, Coast Guard Cutter Morgenthau, Honolulu, Hawaii. <laughs> Seaman Jonathan Rosenberg, stationed in Houston, Texas. Fireman Joey Frazier, stationed Cleveland Harbor, Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> Fireman Apprentice Justin Hart, National Motor Lifeboat School, Iwaku, Washington. <laughs> Seaman Apprentice Joseph, Joseph Kugelsey, Coast Guard Cutter Alex Haley, Kodiak, Alaska. His certificate is being presented by his mentor, Chief Justin Shackelford, U.S. Coast Guard. <laughs> Seaman Apprentice Jean-Luc Frechette, Coast Guard Cutter, Northland, Portsmouth, Virginia. His certificate is being presented by his mother, Captain Marin Shea, U.S. Army. Seaman Stephen Militello, Honor Guard, Alexandria, Virginia. <laughs> Seaman Apprentice Joseon Morales, EMA School, Yorktown, Virginia. <laughs> Seaman Apprentice Riley Woods, MKA School, Yorktown, Virginia. His certificate is being presented by his father, Chief Warrant Officer Scott Woods, U.S. Coast Guard. Fireman Apprentice Michael Husbands, Station Kings Point, New York. <laughs> Fireman Apprentice Dawson Schaefer, Coast Guard Cutter, Thunder Bay, Rockland, Maine. <laughs> Seaman Eric E.G., Ace Navigation Team, Baltimore, Maryland. Seaman Apprentice Mark Nelson, Honor Guard, Alexandria, Virginia. Seaman <laughs> Eli Seals, Honor Guard, Alexandria, Virginia.
Ladies and gentlemen, those are the graduates of Zulu 1902. The band will begin playing the Coast Guard service song, Semper Paratus, which means always ready. We invite all guests to remain standing and sing along with the graduates of Zulu 1 or 2. Please be seated. Graduates, this is your final muster as Zulu 1 or 2. When you are dismissed, your company will be disbanded forever. You'll become working members of the Coast Guard family assigned around the world. You've been trained and challenged by the best the service has to offer. Your training has taught you that the Coast Guard's three core values, honor, respect, and devotion to duty, should guide your performance, conduct, and decisions every minute of every day. We wish you great success and hope your lives and careers are blessed with fair winds and following seas. Post the company guide on. Professor Utenhauen, disband the graduating company.